There's no question that the human race has benefited enormously from having antibiotics available to us. A lot of things that are available currently in medicine will no longer be available. Antibiotic resistance basically is just the ability of a microorganism to grow in the presence of an antibiotic. Practically it means that if you have an antibiotic resistant organism, then you can no longer be treated with that particular antibiotic. See, basketball is so fun. In general, bacteria don't select particular individuals to affect their, they'll affect anybody that they can come in contact with. However, uh, people who are more likely to get sick uh, are people who are in high risk settings, for example, hospitals, for example, people who don't have access to good sanitation or live in particular you know, disadvantaged areas. There are three major causes of resistance. The first one is where the um, antibiotic fails to get into the organism or the bacterium actually spits the antibiotic back out into the, uh, into the environment. The second major mechanism is where the bacterium actually changes the antibiotic so it no longer works and one way it can do this is destroy its chemical structure. The third major mechanism is where the bacteria changes the target of that antibiotic so that it fulfills its normal function in the cell but no longer is able to bind and therefore be inhibited by the antibiotic. The things we commonly call antibiotics should probably be named antibacterials. Uh, using an antibiotic for viral infection is not only ineffective, uh, it's potentially harmful. It probably would astonish people to know that each human being has about two pounds of bacteria within them. In fact, you have more bacterial cells in your body than human cells. So bacteria are not all bad. They do a lot of good things for you. One of the things that your normal bacteria do for you is they exclude, for example, pathogenic or nasty bacteria from uh, causing infection. Um, another thing is they contribute to the way you digest foods. So it's not really a good idea to scrub bacteria from your environment. And I would say overall it's not a good idea to use a lot of cleaning products and such like with antibacterial substances in them. A lot of patients um, with illness come in looking uh, for antibiotics. Um, the, uh, the trend has changed though. A few years ago, most of them expected antibiotics and would be disappointed um, if they weren't prescribed. Uh, the message has gotten out uh, better than it used to be about viruses and antibiotics and more patients are relieved to hear they have a viral illness and don't need antibiotics um, and satisfied with that advice uh, than in the past. It's hard to say how many re actual resistant organisms there are, but I'll give you some ideas. There's a really nasty bug around now called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. So MRSA um, has traditionally been considered a hospital pathogen. Um, in North America, there are about 100,000 hospital MRSA infections every year. That's a massive number, and the number is increasing year over year. Um, now MRSA has become such an important uh, or widespread bacterium in our society that we're starting to see infections not just in the hospital but outside of the hospital, community acquired infections. It's a huge concern that somebody might acquire a superficial infection, um, for example an infection of a cut or a burn or an insect bite and that could be deadly to them. So antibiotic resistance has a huge impact on the cost of, of health care in dollars, in deaths, in, in uh, uh, ill health. But there are estimates that antibiotic resistance may cost up to $30 billion per year. And those costs are increasing because of the increasing amount of resistance that we see in the, in the hospital setting. We talk about something like SARS, which killed a total of 8,000 people. It was a terrible thing, there's no question about that. But last year in North America, um, over 100,000 people died from antibiotic resistant infections. More than 200,000 people died from sepsis, which is a consequence of bacterial infections. 
Imagine a world in which there can be no major surgeries because no major surgery can occur without the potential for preventing infection thereafter, where there would be no radiation therapy for cancer because that destroys your immune system's ability to fight off microorganisms and you need the help from antibiotics. There are two things that we can do to stop the spread of resistance. The first, I think, is education, um, and that really um, involves physicians not prescribing antibiotics when they're unwarranted, patients not demanding antibiotics under circumstances where they don't really need those antibiotics, everybody just basically taking a little bit more care to use the precious tools that we have available today. The second thing that can be done is really to discover new antibiotics. There is a time in your life when antibiotic resistance will become more important to you. That is not the time to suddenly start becoming concerned about antibiotic resistance. So think about antibiotic resistance today, tell people that it's a problem, insist to politicians that they need to start thinking about this, planning for the future instead of for the next election, and let's get on with the job.